Hey guys, so today we're checking out the Insane Audio Plug and Play Navigation Unit fitting all 2007 to 2013 Silverado 1500s. Now if you're in search of a big upgrade to your factory head unit, this option by Insane Audio is going to be one you're going to want to take a look into. So this is going to not only be a navigation unit, but it's also going to be a multimedia center with a number of different features. So this is going to add a more modern feel to the inside of your Silverado while giving you a ton of features that your factory unit was unable to give you. Now just to cover a few, this is going to be Wi-Fi as well as Bluetooth compatible. So you will be able to access the internet on this device. You're also going to be able to access that Bluetooth with an iPhone or an Android device. This will also be compatible with a number of different apps that you can download on the head unit itself from the Google Play Store, including Waze, GoPro, Spotify, and even Pandora. Now what I really like about this system in comparison to even some other options is the fact that this is gonna come with an OBD2 port that is Bluetooth connected to the head unit. So you will be able to read real-time data from your ECU in your Silverado while also being able to read and clear trouble codes. Now the other big thing about this head unit is the fact that this is going to be a complete plug and play setup, perfect for the truck owner who's looking for a very user friendly and no hassle design. Now with all that being said, this is gonna be roughly $1,200 and in my personal opinion, I think that's a pretty fair price for what you're getting in the package. Now you are getting a direct fit Silverado product, so this is not going to be a universal head unit in comparison to some other choices. Now with that being said, said that those universal options usually require a lot of modification or even a lot of wiring as to where this will only require a little bit of modification in your truck with a complete plug and play system. Not to mention this is also going to come with a three year 36,000 mile warranty so you can keep a peace of mind when installing this on your truck. As for install guys, you're gonna be looking at a one out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter. Like I said, a lot of this is plug and play. However, we will have to do a little bit of cutting behind the dash in order to make sure that this fits. However, that is going to be pretty basic. We're gonna need some pretty basic hand tools and probably about an hour's worth of our time. So speaking of that install, let's jump into that now. The tools that I used for my install were a body saw, a panel removal tool, a quarter inch drive ratchet, a 10 millimeter and seven millimeter socket, a Phillips head screwdriver, and an impact wrench. So our first step to this install is to take off this panel to expose our fuse box so we can take off this lower panel section. So I'm just gonna pop this off by hand. And then we can take off the screws that are holding on the bottom of this panel. So there's going to be two Phillips head screws on either side of this bottom panel. I'm just gonna take a Phillips head screwdriver and remove both of those. So after those two Phillips head screws are removed, there is a 10 millimeter bolt that's underneath our parking brake lever. I'm gonna take a 10 millimeter socket and go ahead and remove that. Right, once that bolt is removed, we can pull on our panel and we should be able to remove it then. You may have to use a panel tool just to give it a good tug. And then we can put this panel to the side. So our next step is to remove this ashtray. So I'm gonna pull it down. And then there's two clips on either side. I'm just gonna wiggle this out. It should pop right out. So our next step is to remove these two seven millimeter screws on this side. And behind our ashtray, there's a Phillips head screw that we'll get to in just a second. For these two, I'm gonna use a seven millimeter socket and my impact wrench. Inside, we can use that Phillips head screwdriver. All right, once that screw is out, we should be able to pull on this panel. So what we can do next is pull on this panel. I'm just gonna grab a trim tool or a pry tool, help me out. Should be held on by a series of clips. Then we can put this panel to the side. 
What we can do next is pull off the trim piece that's surrounding our radio as well as our climbing control unit here. I'm going to use a panel tool and I'm going to start at the lower left hand corner and pull forward. This is held on by a series of clips. We're not going to have any bolts holding in this surround piece. So before we can fully remove this trim piece, we are going to disconnect a couple of things. So there are three plugs here that we're just going to press down and pull back on. Then we can put this trim piece to the side so we can work on our unit here. So our next step is to remove these six screws on either side. These are going to be seven millimeters. So I'm going to use that seven millimeter socket that we used earlier and just go ahead and remove those. Make sure you hold on to that hardware and we can pull out our climbing control system. We can disconnect these because we're just going to need it out of the way for the meantime while we install our new head unit. Right, put that down to the side. Then we can remove our head unit. Now this is going to be a little bit difficult to see but we do need to disconnect the wires on the back here. All you have to do is press down and pull back. So we can take our main unit and put it to the side. So before we hop into the install, I did want to stop down and tell you guys a little bit more about this insane audio navigation unit and the full head unit and everything that it comes with um, and all the benefits that you're going to get out of this in comparison to your stock setup. Now I'm sure you guys are familiar with your stock radio setup, but just as a basic overview, you're only going to have a couple of different functions when it comes to your factory setup. So you're going to have that basic AM FM radio control with a couple of preset settings and you're also going to have a CD player and integrated into the head unit. Um, now you're also getting a basic screen and some pretty basic trim as well as a lot of manual buttons, but we're moving over to a kit like this insane audio option. This is going to have a number of different benefits that are going to be big upgrades in comparison to our factory unit. Now starting off, this is going to be roughly the same size. It is a double din in comparison to our factory double din, so we are staying around the same size as far as install, but this is going to come with a fully touch screen and full color display display right on the front there so it is going to be a lot more modernized than our factory head unit. Not only is this new head unit going to be more modernized than our factory one but it is also going to be a little bit more durable with an IP66 rating so you can ensure that no water or no dust are going to get into the head unit and end up damaging it. Now Insane Audio does claim as well that this is going to be shockproof and it is not made with any moving parts so you can ensure that this is going to hold up a lot better than your factory unit and the average head unit. Now again this is going to have a number of different features you can see everything that's laid out on the table um, but all of this is going to be completely plug and play. So this is going to come with 3D navigation, it's also going to be Wi-Fi and Bluetooth compatible, compatible with iPhone as well as Android and a number of different apps on the Play Store that I'll go through in just a minute. Now you're also going to have a number of audio inputs and outputs, a micro USB, multiple ports for multiple standard USBs, and you're going to be able to wire this up to your factory steering wheel controls and even your factory backup camera if your Silverado is equipped. Now the thing that I really like about this in comparison to not only the factory unit but the average head unit is that this is going to come with an OBD2 plug. This is going to plug right into your OBD2, uh, be Bluetooth compatible with the head unit and you'll be able to read and clear trouble codes uh, via your head unit here. Um, now again, this is going to be completely plug and play. The only thing that we're really switching up is going to be that face plate. So Insane Audio does provide us one there. That's something that we don't have to swap over from our factory unit. So that's going to be our first step for install. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we can take our faceplate, making sure that the one small notch is facing the top. And turn this upside down. Then we can take our side brackets that were provided in the kit and slide them in. You want to make sure that these are not uh, protruding the top here or the bottom. 
And then we can take our head unit, slide that down on in. So now that the brackets and the faceplate are on, what we can do is make sure that it's sitting flush with the head unit itself and the screen up at the front here. We can actually turn it on its side so we can secure it down with the supplied screws. Now you're gonna get eight screws. However, you do have to just um, line these up with the bracket. Uh, so I have a couple of holes, looks like six holes, um, three on either side. That will work just fine. I'm just using a Phillips head screwdriver, threading these in. Now, as you can see, there is a little bit of play in this bracket, but there are two mounting points on the front of this that will hold both of these in place. We're just securing the bracket to the head unit right now. Flip it on the other side. Do the same thing. You wanna make sure that it's sitting pretty flush. That'll make sure that everything's lined up. So after the bracket is installed, what we can do is start to piece our wiring together. So now we can start to plug in all of our wires and all of our connections. I'm gonna start from left to right um, and go over the basic wiring. So we're gonna have two ports here. One's going to be for the Wi-Fi, one's gonna be for the GPS. It is going to be labeled, so I'm gonna start with our little Wi-Fi antenna. All we have to do is just thread this on. Once our Wi-Fi antenna is on, we can install our antenna adapter in the port that says radio. Then we can plug in our mic. This is going to be our external mic. There is also an internal mic in the unit, but this is going to um, help out with controls a little bit easier. That's just gonna go into the back and we will route this. Uh, through the interior inside the Silverado in just a little bit. So our next one is gonna be our RCA. Now this is gonna be all of your inputs and outputs uh, for your stereo system, as well as, as if you were to um, have any uh, cameras or uh, front-facing cameras on your truck. Uh, now we are not going to be using this, so I'm going to put this to the side to save a little bit of wiring because we're just going to be using the factory connectors. Um, next is actually our factory connector. So this is our main wiring harness. Uh, we're gonna have a number of different things in here. These two plugs are going to plug into our factory harness. This is our main control box. We also have a relay here. Uh, these two cables are going to go to a factory backup camera. And we also have another plug and play option for the backup camera if it is equipped. Um, but we do not have that equipped on our Silverado, so I'm just going to plug that in to the back there. Make sure that you hear a click. Um, now, this one up at the top is for an iPhone connector. Now, this is an older iPhone connector. Um, this can be used with an adapter for the lightning cable. However, um, I'm going to put this to the side, but this would be plugged in here and then routed to your glove box. Now you're also going to have a USB port down here. Now you can use any standard USB port connector. Uh, you are provided with a micro USB uh, adapter. Uh, this can be plugged in the back here. Now we're not going to plug anything in, so to save a little space in the wiring in the back of our dash, I'm just going to put this to the side. Um, and last but not least is our GPS unit. Uh, now this is our GPS module. It's gonna go in the same way that our Wi-Fi antenna did. I'm just gonna thread this on. Once that's on there, Insane Audio actually recommends that you place it right up on top. 
um, if you don't have a better spot for it. So we're just going to leave it right on top. This is a magnet, so this will stick to the top here. I'm just gonna leave it spooled up. So now that everything is plugged in, what we can do is head over to our truck. Before we can mount up our actual head unit, what we need to do is cut out part of this trim piece in our dash. Now right now, we would not be able to mount up our head unit. The wires in the back are just a little bit too long um, and it does butt up against this here. So Insane Audio recommends to cut about two inches up and about six inches wide to be able to um, put all of the wires in the back area here. So what I'm gonna do is take a body saw. You can also use a Dremel. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and cut two inches up and six inches wide. It'll leave you with about a half inch on either side. You also just wanna be careful of your wires here. I have them down and out of the way. They shouldn't actually come up, uh, but you just wanna be mindful of those. I'm actually gonna follow this line here. So I'm gonna make a quick cut down the center. Now this doesn't have to be perfect. Nobody's going to see this. This is just uh, just going to open up some space for our wires to be pushed back through. So now we can go ahead and test fit our unit. So before we mount up our head unit, I did want to run our mic wire through the back of our dash here. Now this is just going to keep the wire out of the way, um, but we are going to be mounting our mic up with the little mount here on top of our steering column. So I'm just going to Put that here for just a minute. Let that hang out while we pull this wire back, clean it up. Now our dash is going to cover up this area. We just wanna make sure that it's out of the way of the clips and the mounting points. We can plug this back into the back of our head unit and then we can get ready to plug in the rest of our wires. So the three main wires that we'll be plugging into the back of our system here are gonna be our two uh, factory wiring harnesses, all right? And then we're also going to mount up our antenna adapter. Now, if you have to mount up your backup camera wiring harness, you can do that at this point uh, with the factory harness. But what we're going to do is take our control box So what we're gonna do is start to tuck our wires back and try to make them as clean as possible. Now we do have a lot more wires uh, than what comes with the factory. So that's why we had to cut out that slot. I'm actually gonna take this control box and put it in the back here. There's a slot in the back of the dash where we can kind of put this into. So once that is sitting in place, we can take our factory screws. It's gonna be those seven millimeter screws. We can start to thread those back in. Now we want to make sure before we put all of our panels back on that this is operating correctly. So once we tighten these screws down with our seven millimeter socket, we can double check.
So we tested everything, everything is working properly so we can plug our climate control back in and mount that back up with those same 7 millimeter screws. And tighten that up with the 7 millimeter socket. Right, and then we can put our faceplate back on or our trim piece. So next we can install our trim, plugging back in our wiring harnesses for our track control, um, our cigarette lighter and our 12 volt. So we can go ahead, line this up and give it a good press, making sure that that mic wire is out of the way. Once that trim piece is flat, then we can grab our other trim piece that goes down at the bottom and we can just continue along at the bottom here. Next, we can take our lower trim piece, line all the pins, press that into place. Right, and then we can secure this middle trim piece down with the two seven millimeter screws as well as the one Phillips head screw. Tighten those up with the seven millimeter socket. Then we can reinstall this screw down at the bottom inside the ashtray cut out here with that Phillips head screwdriver. Then we can take our ashtray, push that into place. Then we can work on our trim piece underneath our steering column. So now we can install our trim piece underneath our steering wheel. So I'm just gonna line everything up. We can re-secure the two Phillips head screws, the little tabs down at the bottom. One on either side. We can tighten those up with the Phillips head screwdriver. We use to remove them. After those are in, what we can do is line up our parking brake lever and make sure that it is lining up with that hole there and then we can re-secure that 10 millimeter bolt down. There are two tabs that you can just slide up and in. Then we should be able to pull this lever back. Line that bolt up down at the bottom. We can tighten it down with that 10 millimeter socket that we use to remove it. All right, just wanna make sure that that's operating properly. And then we can reinstall the trim piece on the side over our fuse box. Last but not least, we can take our trim piece for the side fuse panel and pop that back into place and then we're all set to go. So if you'd like to use the OBD2 sensor for your head unit, what you can do is just plug that in. That's gonna be located directly under your kicker panel uh, underneath your steering wheel there. So now that we have our head unit installed, what we can do is turn on our truck and our head unit will come on. Now, this may be the first screen that it comes to. This is just going to be our radio setting, but we can go ahead and press home and this will be our main screen. Now we're gonna have a couple of options down at the bottom, but our main menu is going to be at that center uh, app there. So as you can tell, we have a number of different apps. A lot of these are also going to be settings, including a calculator, calendar, clock contacts. Um, so you will be able to access a lot of the settings through here. Um, you're also going to have insane audio um, options as well. You have an insane audio dialer, the utility, um, your navigation, and if you swipe over, you'll see a couple of different options as well, including insane EQ and TV. Now this screen is just going to allow you to change your audio, and then we can go back. 
um, or we can press this tab here to go back. Um, and you're gonna have a number of different things. You'll be able to access all of your Google accessories um, or even download Android apps uh, or any apps from the Play Store as well. Now on the side here, you are gonna have a navigation button, but it will also be in your main menu. But once you hit that navigation, it will pull up your uh, GPS and it'll show it this as the main screen. Um, now obviously you can press a destination, you can do route options and you can also do more. Um, this is just going to give you again a number of different options uh, within the GPS settings. Now this is going to be pretty standard as far as GPS goes. But it is going to have a couple of cool different features on it. Now again, you're going to have that standard radio setting. Uh, you will be able to screen through channels with that. Uh, you will have a volume button here. Uh, I have it on mute right now. Now down at the bottom, we also will have Bluetooth music and your OBD2. Um, I don't have any Bluetooth hooked up to this right now, uh, but we can check out this OBD2. Now this is connected via the OBD2 plug that we have in our Silverado. Um, this is gonna give us all of our data from our OBD2, and you will also be able to uh, clear and read trouble codes. Now we obviously don't have any trouble codes with ours, so uh, nothing is coming up. So we can exit that out. And now you also will be able to access just a main browser here uh, with Google Chrome, and you'll be able to download any apps as well. So that's gonna wrap it up for my review and install. Make sure you like and subscribe, and for more videos and products like this, make sure you always keep it right here at americantrucks.com.